Hey guys, happy new year and you know as the saying goes, the best time to learn Rust was last year, the second best time is right now. And I'm currently working on my side project called Bubble, which is a video and uh, messaging call, voice video call messaging app uh, written in JavaScript using TypeScript and Node uh, Express as its uh, web framework. And uh, I'm currently migrating all the backend server, all the code of the backend server to Rust. And when you write a um, web server, backend server in Rust, one thing you might need in any programming languages is a DB connection. And one of the best packages you could use in your Rust project is SQLX. SQLX is really awesome. It is truly asynchronous, so you can async await all you want. You can make an async truly asynchronous application with, with SQLX. It is compile time checked. It has compile time checked queries, which is freaking awesome. Because what this means is that SQLX is going to check at compile time if your queries, you know, those strings like select everything from table name, if those queries are correct, can be compiled to or can be uh, uh, converted into uh, correct Rust structs that you have defined in your application. It can be connected with any SQL-like um, database and um, you can use any, um, you can use any asynchronous runtime as you want. Async standard, Tokyo, Actix, and um, this one is, is something different. But uh, because um, I'm gonna show you how we can use SQLX with Actix, we are going to use uh, the Actix uh, one time for our asynchronous code or for the execution of our asynchronous code, I should say. So I've already created a bare bones Actix web project. I have here, um, obviously Actix web as our uh, dependency, SQLX with the Actix runtime, MySQL and the macros feature enabled. The macros feature is really necessary and is the one of the biggest reason why you should SQLX because this macros, the macros that the uh, SQLX uh, project package is um, is giving us is is making the queries are the thing that is going to make compile time check queries. The macros are the thing that make our compile time check queries. My God. We are also gonna need cert for uh, serializing our structs that we've uh, basically we are querying the data from the database. SQLX is gonna create some struct objects that we've defined out of it. And with those structs, we're gonna serialize it into JSON so we can send it back. And I've added some scripts in here. Those are like npm run scripts that you can use in your Rust project by doing something like um, not npm, cargo install cargo run script. And this is gonna give you a way to say something like cargo run script and then the name of your script. And um, I've added those in here into the project. I have added db create, start, stop, and remove. And uh, let's look up in, let's see the create dbsh script. This is basically just creating a simple Docker container um, called SQLX based on the MariaDB uh, Docker container image with the port you would expect with an SQL server. Uh, the root user, the password of that user, and um, SQLX, our database name, and then we're also um, giving it a startup and init script to create our tables inside that SQLX database. Uh, let's see that script. This is just basically creating a user. The user um, is... Um, defined at localhost and on this weird IP address. The reason is because um, this weird IP address is necessary if we are accessing the SQL server inside a Docker image. So uh, without that, we will get a permission error. And we're gonna do the same as we are granting the permissions to the SQL database to our user. Then we're creating uh, a table a users table with the ID, username and email, and we are creating two dummy users so we can already uh, test the database and query those data. So let's 
go into the main RS file where I've already created a bare bones actx web project. And as you can see, this is just a basic project with um, a root route that's just gonna give us some text, some string that's gonna say servers up and running. So there's nothing special in here. The first thing we wanna do when we want to connect to a database is obvious, we need to create a connection. SQLX or with many other uh, DB connectors, you can have two kinds of connections. You can have a single connection and a pool connection. Because we are having a web server with many threads that um, run parallel and um, doing parallel requests to the database, we want uh, to have a pool connection. So we can have many connections to the, um, to the database at the same time. And it's very easy to create one in SQLX. We are just creating the variable let pool, which is of type MySQL pool. And then we are going to create a MySQL pool options object. And these MySQL pool options objects allow us to change some defaults. For example, I can uh, change the default of the maximum connections um, that we can have in our application from five to 10. And then I can just call connect to the DB URL that we also need to create in here. Let's make it a const db url and then str. And the URL that um, we need to pass in here is very simple. We are just saying mysql double colon slash slash, the username double colon, the password of that user, add the IP address. So this would be something like this. And um, the port, which is 3306, and then the name of the database we want to connect to. So yeah, that's basically it. Then we need to await this and unwrap it because it will return a result and we don't care. I want the server to panic if it can't do a connection to the, uh, to the MySQL server. So uh, that's, that's how I want it, but you could do some error handling here to make it more user-friendly, for example. So we also need to import all the structs that we uh, have here. So it's inside SQL, MySQL, and then MySQL pool and MySQL pool options. Yeah, now we've created a pool connection. Now we need to have a way to access access this pool in our handler functions, in our routes. And the way you will do it in, in Actix Web is by creating an app state. And let's create a struct here that's going to derive clone, because we're gonna clone it uh, later in, in a moment. So this is struct app state, which just has pool of type MySQL. So, yeah, then let's just create app state and pass in pool. That's it. Editor our application, do it like that web data new and then app state dot clone. That's it. Fairly easy to create a pool connection to our MySQL server. Now we want to maybe do some stuff with it. Like we don't, we want to query some data, we want to fetch some data out of the MySQL server. So let's uh, create a handler function and let's call it get user. And this one is going to return an HTTP response. So uh, let's also create the route as well in here. So the route would be get and then something like user ID and web get to get user. Okay, let's add all the extractors we're gonna need for that. The first one would be path. So web path would be of type u size and um, app state, obviously. App state would be web data app state. Okay, uh, let's just also create a user ID here as a variable, which is of type user path 
into inner and yeah now to the tricky part or oh, it's not really tricky but it's a little bit confusing so i'm gonna explain it really really slowly <laughs> so um to make a query in sqlx we have the query function or what we also have is the sqlx query as function the query as function um makes it so we can uh, query it to a type the query so um query as like query as a user or query as a message so it's it's trying to convert our our fetching uh, what data we are querying from the database and trying to convert it into into a struct type um so um yeah the query uh, returns this query function returns an object that's called query and this one is returning object that's called query as so those kind of queries those kind of um, objects that being created is something special and it's called inside the documentation of SQLX as a prepared um, query what does prepare mean um, According to the documentation, we could open it. Um, let's look for it. prepared. Okay, now, yes. So, um, yeah, just let me explain it. I can't find it right now. So, query means that those uh, queries, those prepared query means that those queries we've created with query or query as are cached. Uh, and they are lower in size, lower in byte size, I think. They are cached and um, yeah, that's basically is faster decoding. Oh yeah, faster decoding. And we can uh, bind some values uh, to it, uh, for example, to prevent um, SQL injection attacks. So the way you query is basically those two functions. You want to use those two functions. And also at query or query as, we can call different functions as well. So uh, in here, for example, we'd, we would have the query like select something. Here would be the query as a string, as a normal string. And um, we can call on query, we can call uh, fetch. Uh, let me create some. We can fetch all, we can fetch optional, and we can fetch one. And the last one would be execute. So yeah, uh, the first one, the fetch one is a little bit complicated. It returns a stream, an asynchronous stream. What that means is that we, um, while we are fetching the values, we could loop over the results and already, and already um, perform some logic, perform some code. So this would be the most performant, but I don't think, well, in, in my honest opinion, I'm not really a fan of fetch because it makes the code really co complicated and hard to understand. So I prefer just to use the other ones that are just fetching the data, waiting till it's finished, finished that we have all the data we want, and then we can continue. I think that makes the code more readable, uh, but um, if for some reason you want the maximum performance and you need this performance, you might want to use fetch and might look into it, but I'm not going to explain it into detail in this uh, in, in this video. Uh, fetch all returns um, a vector of some type. Fetch optional returns the first row as an option, so it could be none. For example, we give it the user ID, but the user with this user ID doesn't exist, so we, it would be none. Uh, fetch one just returns t, and this execute returns a database query result. Or in this case, if you are using MySQL, it would be MySQL query result, I think should be the one. Yeah. So that's a brief explanation on how SQLX works and how we can query data. So more into the practical. Um, now, now to the practice, now we're gonna uh, get the first user or, or a user. So this user is of type user and well, it's not of type user, but uh, let's add the type later. So we can make something like uh, select query and then 
Um, the query would be, what would be the query? Select uh, everything from users where ID equals some value. And this question mark, you might already know that. That's the way so we can bind some, some input, for example, the user ID uh, and, prevent, um, and prevent SQL injection attacks to, to happen. So we just uh, add user ID as here. But um, SQLX doesn't support use size. So we have to convert it and we're just making it 64 bit. So uh, yeah, so we bind the value and then we are calling one of those functions we have here. We could call execute, but um, this doesn't make any sense because we want to retrieve the data. So we can, we could say fetch optional because the user could be none. And in this optional, we're gonna pass um, a reference to our pool, like that. This is also asynchronous, so we have to await that. And now, what is this type? We said query, not query as. So MySQL, or SQLX in this case, doesn't know which type we wanted to give. It's just, it's just a generic type, and, and it has a way to, uh, to handle those like if you don't know what kind of type we are fetching here, what kind of uh, type this the select statement is returning. If we know it, then we could use query as, or if we want to make it precise, we can use query as. But in this case, it will return something like a result that is returning an option of my SQL row or an SQL element, something like that. We can make it a little bit shorter, the statement, by using the SQLX result, then we can remove the error in here. Because this one is, is, is known in the SQLX result type that's being exported from the SQLX package. Yeah. And what if we don't want this MySQL row? Uh, on, on this MySQL row, we could call then something like user get um, which returns um, some, some row that we are, uh, want to access, or we could make it a comment here, or we could say user try get, I think it's called, to make it an option of, of the row we are trying to access, or not the row, the column, like this, this value, like uh, ID, for example, or the username. And we can say something like get, uh, username in here. But uh, this would be a safe way if we don't know what kind of um, data we are fetching. But in most cases you do know. So you could use the query as function. And what this allows us is to put in here user. So we know it's a user. We know user has, uh, has the fields, but we also need to create the user in here as a struct, as a Rust struct, it has an ID which is of type um, integer 32-bit, uh, it has a username which is of type string, and it has an email which is also of type string. But if you do it like that, you will also need to um, derive the from row that is um, available, I think, where is it, in, in SQLX, from row, I think, or it could be it could be my SQL from row. I don't know. So, um, yes, yeah, I think it's from row. Yes, it's from row. Okay, and and now we can use the query as. So we have a typed way of, or how should I say, query as is converting our select statement here into a real Rust struct that we've created in our project. And um, if you do something like, okay, um, for example, select ID as, um, or we just say, we just want two, two values. We, want, we, we just want to use ID and username. Uh, and we want to convert it into a user. And now you can see we don't get a runtime error. We don't get an error in our ID, so we don't get, a, um, if I compile that, I would get an error because I'm not returning HTTP response, but I don't get an error because 
the Rust compiler still thinks this statement is a valid user, but it's not, it's missing the email. So we could, in theory, access the email and crash our server, and we don't want that. So the best way to do that is to use the macros instead. So instead of, um, in, in, instead of saying SQLX query, and then the parentheses, I'm gonna say query with an apostrophe. And this is a macro in the Rust syntax. We also can do that with query as, and this macro is doing something behind, behind the scenes. It's, it's going to, I, I can't explain it really well um, because the code is really, if, if I look up the source code, it's really complicated, I can't understand it, but, but basically what it's doing is some Rust magic. It's going to check the query against the database that has to be running at this point, it has to be running, it has the DB database URL it has to be in the environment in the end was so it should the database URL like that. It has to be something. It, it has to be exactly this name. This one has to be in the environment. Uh, you can also just create a dot env in your root project and add the where did we create it here? Let's just put it in here and database url and remove that and that's all you need to do in your .env file yeah please create a file so that's all we need to do so we don't have to do something like i don't know um if you would run it in a command line something like this uh, we can just add it to our .env file and sqlx is automatically while we are just we, we are just saying cargo one and it sees that the dot end file is in our project it sees that we have the database url defined in this dot end file and it's going to use that database url to uh to connect to the database see all its des descriptions of all our tables and go and check if those descriptions and the way we defined our select statement is going to match moment is going to match the struct if not, it's going to throw an error. And if you don't think that's awesome, I can't help you anymore. Like this is so cool and it makes development so easy without having to use a full-fetched, fully featured ORM. An ORM is basically doing the same, but we still have the freedom to have simple select statements, to have simple SQL statements, queries, and, and make some complicated joins and, and uh, other things that an ORM might not be able to give us or, or have those features, but make some really weird SQL statements out of that that are not really performance. So SQLX is just the perfect middle ground of having fully the, the full control on how you want your queries to be, on how performant you want your queries to be, because maybe you can write better queries than an ORM can and have the best features an ORM can, can deliver compile time checking. So let's do that in here. Um, let's say query as, and then we have to change something because the syntax is slightly different. We don't have to use uh, user ID in here as a bind statement, we can just pass it in here and have user ID as u64. And then we're gonna give it the type as well, just the type. So we just given the, the name of the struct user and everything is the same fetch and await that. And what's going to return is a result, option, user, but this time it's going to compile check. It's, it's going to check, it's going to say, it should say at this case, that this one is not, oh yeah, we don't have the connection, we don't have the database running, so we have to start, uh, start the database. And um, I've already created that, so we're just saying, Create, I think I've already created the database, maybe not. So creating it and then starting it, and now it should be up and running. And now it should, maybe we're gonna add a new line in here to get an, now we get an error. Now it says missing field email, because we don't have email here in our select statement. We don't have it here in our query. If I would add the email in here, we don't have an error anymore. Isn't that awesome? 
And because I want everything, it would work as well. And if I have, for example, if I, if I mistype the user in my Rust code, for example, I've changed the, the um, I've migrated the server, the, the, the MySQL database, and now the user in the MySQL server is different than the user in my, uh, in, in, in my code. Well, it should give an error. It gives an error. User has no such field as email. Now it says, hey, this struct definition of user is not the same as um, the user you have in your database. So one way would be changing, fixing this, the, this, the, the struct definition, or we can just say, just give me the ID and the username, and now it works. That's really cool. I, I, I'm just, I just think this is the best way to do things. And I don't think that Rust was the first one. I think the, the, the Go package, like uh, Go did it first. Some guys at Go, I don't know which one was first, Go or Rust, but it's really cool. And respect to the development team on creating SQLX because I have no idea how this is even working. So now we have the user. And then we can, I don't know, um, let's say uh, we have to return this user. How are we going to return that user? Let me think. It's a result of an option. And um, let's just make it simple. Let's just make it simple. Let's just unwrap it and make it an option and not overthink it because this is just a tutorial. You can overthink it in your own code base. <laughs> So, and uh, match user, either it's uh, some user, then we're going to return the user. Uh, well, uh, I, I forgot something. When we use the query, we don't need any more the from row derive statement. We don't need it anymore. It's not necessary anymore. So we have less boiler, boilerplate code. It's basically one line, but we, we have one line less than before. And um yeah it's just cool like i don't know how to explain it i'm really really amazed i don't know how to say it. i'm really I, I really like this package i really like sqlx so um we but but we're gonna derive something other we're gonna have to derive serialize and uh serial serial how do, how do you type serialize I, I don't know how to type that serial <laughs> we serialize and we need to import that from cert uh, serialize oh we serialize okay it's I'm not as you might guess I'm not a native English speaker so serialize and the serialize complicated words to type and then we're just gonna return the user. Well, I've said we're gonna return the um, an HTTP response. So let's just wrap it into an HTTP response and return the user in here. And uh, if it's none, then we are going to respond with response bad request. And let's make it simple. Let's say bad request into should be fine. Uh, HTTP response, why is, oh, I don't have HTTP response imported. So, yeah. And now we're gonna compile the server. Um, help a struct with similar uh, HTTP, yeah. Um, HTTP response. Now it works. So now it's compiling. So now let's clear this one here and let's say HTTP get user with the ID one. Let's see what's happening. Well, we have to wait till the server is compiled successfully. We get Mark. Let's do two. We get, oh, I mistyped Leon. But as you can see, and now free, what's for free? We get nothing, we get a bad request. No, we could give it a message back, a JSON message, something like uh, error message, I don't know. You get it. 
And uh, one thing, so we can, um, like we can uh, call fetch all to get all users. We could say fetch optional to get um, the first row or fetch one to get the first row. And, um, or we could basically say oh, fetch one instead and we don't have to unwrap that, but doesn't matter. You will get it. Oh, just, just let's do that. Uh, let's say result but an SQLX result and then we're gonna remove that unwrap statement here and then we're gonna say if it's okay or if it's an error, then this should work as well. Yeah. And uh, one thing that, we, that I wanna explain one give example of would be execute. Um, let's make a um, delete, let's delete one user. So async fn delete user, which has also path in it uh, because we want to give it the, uh, the, the ID of the user we want to delete. Uh, it's web path and then use size as well. So like use size, uh, use size means um, just use the unsigned integer of the current operating system. This code is being compiled on. So in my case, it would be 64 bits. So this would be the same as uh, saying u64 um at compile time or after it's compiled i don't know how that works maybe some of you in the comments can explain that a little bit more uh into more detail as we've done it in the past videos i'm really thankful for all the explanation it's really awesome to have a discussion um on that level in the comments really appreciate it so uh delete user path and obviously we also need to have access to our pool connection so web dot um web.data app state. This is going to return HTTP response as well. So uh, let's delete the user. Um, let's create the user ID by path into inner and then query. Now we're just saying normal query, not saying query as because we don't care about the type and we don't get a type. We can't convert because we are calling execute on that. This execute is returning a MySQL query result in this case, or a database query result. So we don't care about the type and we, even if we would, we can't, it's not possible. So um, this would, it's, 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 it's just not possible. It would throw an error uh, the other way, the one way or the other way. So the query would be delete um, from, I think it's delete from users where ID is this, and then we are going to, let's make it a little bit more cleaner. And then in here we pass the user ID as U64. We execute every time we are calling fetch or some variant of fetch or execute, we have to pass the current, the, the pool, the pool connection. Or if you have a singular uh, a single connection, you can just pass the, 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 the single connection that's most times just called con. But in this case, pool. And then we await that. This one, as I said, um, yeah, let's store it in a, uh, in, in a variable. And this one is then of type result. It's either, as I said, my SQL query result. Ah, let's type that my SQL query result, or it's an SQL X error. And um, yes, that's it. Uh, I don't know if I already told that, but uh, SQL X has a result type that's it's exporting. So we can remove this SQL X error if we use the result type of SQL X. It's just more concise uh, syntax. Yeah. And then we can say, we can say match deleted and um, deleted, there's a missing E. And then we can say if it's, it's a result, so it's either okay or it's uh, an error. And then we can return some HTTP response. Uh, the okay would be just, uh, I don't care. Um, I don't care about the value, it's the query result. 
if it's okay, it's okay. It means it has deleted the cell. Uh, it, 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 it deleted it. Uh, we also need to import MySQL query result to get that error away. MySQL query result. So, yeah. And if it's okay, HTTP response okay. And just say into. And uh, HTTP response. Uh, should it be a bad? Uh, let, let's say it's a bad request. Like that. And it's done. And the query seems to be correct because it's not throwing me any SQL uh, query. If I would do something like this, it should throw an error. Yes, as you can see. So it even works as just, um, yeah, um, how do you call it? Like uh, an, an SQL linter if you have um, Rust Analyzer in your IDE. So it's, I can't explain how I am love. How I am in love with this package, it's just awesome. So um, let's delete one user. So we have to compile it. We compile it. Oh, we have a missed uh, expected struct user found option. Ah, yes, because I said fetch optional and yo. Um, where is it? Yeah, it's not fetch optional, it's fetch one. So forgot to change that. So now it's working. So let's uh, delete Mark. Because I don't like myself. I want to, I, I want, <laughs> I want to delete myself. I want to self delete me. <laughs> that, that, that's kind of wrong. But it's working. And um, I think I forgot to add the route. So we have to recompile it one more time. Uh, delete and then user ID web uh, delete to delete user, like such, like so. So let's clear the, clear the screen and run cargo one. It's compiling. And let's wait a moment. Let's switch because we have done so much work right now. Oh, it's compiled, works. So let's delete him. Delete, uh, let's clear the screen. HTTP delete, import 8000, um, delete, and then user with the ID one, it's an okay. User, user with the ID one doesn't exist anymore. So let's get him. Oh, it's not there anymore. Okay, we got a bad request. We could uh, create um, a route to get all users. Um, yeah, let's just do that real quick. Um, async fn get users, and this one only needs the app state. Web data, just uh, copy paste that instead of retyping it myself, but um, yeah, let's just do that real quick. So uh, in this case, we are just saying SQL x uh, query s and then um, user, uh, this one has to be a string, select everything from users and um, don't need any more. Call fetch all with app state pool, wait, and then you could do uh, a match statement like that and you could say, mm, 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 mm. What does it return? It, it, it returns a result that's either okay. So we are gonna turn the users as an HTTP response. Okay. Dot JSON users or none. Uh, not none. An error. And we don't care about the message, the error message. So let's say that's bad. Or in this case, it, it, it would be internal server error because uh, this shouldn't happen. Into. Yeah, uh, we get an error because user is not found because we've defined it in, uh, the, 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 uh, in, inside the center function. Let's make it global uh, by putting it in here uh, and then do everything and then uh, everything works. Uh, we also need to um, add this here as a route. 
and let's say just get app get to get users uh, we compile that and now i can show you that mark doesn't exist anymore and that he self-deleted himself um just get and we see we got an array back a vector and it's only of leon and uh let's delete leon as well because i don't like him and let's get every user it's just an empty string uh empty string an empty array and now we could make create user route maybe patch user route like a real uh, quad application but you get it you, you, you get the gist and sqlx is really awesome and i think you should at least, at least try it out in your next was project or in your current was project if you um haven't um uh, if you don't use another uh db connector at the moment so uh thank you for watching the video until the end um please don't forget to like and subscribe especially if you watch it to the end like what do you, do you watch the whole video you just subscribe and like the video at least and um comment give me a comment give me your own opinion about oams if you should use sqlx if you think this is dumb if you think there are better ways to do something i really like the um discussion in the comments so keep it up guys and bye <laughs>